we're looking at an MSI laptop, a GF65 Thin 9SD model, and it won't boot. You can't even get into the BIOS if you see what's happening. So, try to boot it. Can't even get the, normally with these models, the MSI logo will come up, but it doesn't. And in this case, instead of white, the power on light stays red. It's just not booting. And if I turn it over, on these models and a lot of different MSI laptops, there is, one of the first things I try is to reset the BIOS. There's a BIOS reset, and if you have like a paper clip, you know, or something very small, but with a very small aperture, there's a switch in here. And if you can contact that switch, it'll reset the BIOS. Okay, and sometimes that's, that's enough to make it bootable, at least so you can get into the BIOS. But until we can do that, we can't do anything with the operating system or, or anything else on this laptop. Um, when you do that, on this model, I forgot you need to, to reset it, you have to give it a little bit of an AC charge from the adapter. And then that makes it, we can cut it on again, but notice it's just turning red immediately. And we don't have the option to go into the BIOS. There's no logo, there's no anything. So if we can't access that, we, we can't do anything. So at this point, we've got to fix that problem first. So I'm going to hold this down. And flip it over I'm gonna reset it once again so there's no power and let's give it these bits here and let me see, my cat wants to jump up here right now. No, Jack. No, Jack. Stay. <laughs> that would be a disaster. Uh, cats are good at that, aren't they? No, Jack. Stay. No, Jack. No. No, 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 no. I love you, but no, not right now. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Here. Do you want to see Jack? Come here, Jack. Okay. This is Jack, and he's wanting to jump up here. <laughs> say hi, Jack. Say hi, buddy. You say hi, Jack. He's my kitten that I adopted uh, last November. Hey, buddy, I love you. But right now, you can't be on the desk, or you'll knock screws everywhere. Okay, so let's... That's my other cat, Sebastian. And my dog's in here too. I don't know why all three animals have to be in the room with me when I'm doing something where I don't want to lose any of these screws. But hey. Shh. Okay, Sebastian. <laughs> I live in a zoo. What can I say? Alright, would you like to meet the other? Would you like to meet the vocal one? Hold on. This is the vocal one, Sebastian, who keeps me on. And this is Paris, who won't stop chewing the hair off her tail. She's sort of OCD about that, not sure why. Now that you've met my whole dysfunctional animal family, let's get back to work. So just on a non-staticky, smooth surface, Trying to be careful not to scratch the cover. I'm going to remove these screws. 
would help if you had a magnetic screwdriver, but you have to use the old fashioned method. So we've got all our screws out, but the next thing we want to do is we've got to detach this panel, this plastic panel from the rest of the laptop. And you're going to need a, something with a plastic edge. You could use a, a credit card. They make special se plastic separator tools just for this task. I like to use guitar picks because I play guitar and I always have plenty of them laying around the house. Uh, and they just happen to be the perfect uh, consistency and width. You want something that's more flexible, that bends and is softer than metal uh, because you don't want to crack the plastic tabs or break the plastic tabs when you're pulling the the bottom cover off, off the chassis. And then what you want to do is just go around the laptop and you have to separate it at the seams but without damaging those plastic clips. So, start here and we'll see if we can't get in there trying to there I was able to get my guitar pick in there and then gently I want to apply pressure Be, you know careful not to apply too much pressure until we can get it to separate gently with our, our separator tool or our guitar pick, a credit card or whatever you might be using. Alright, so I keep my finger in there and I'm going to go along here, just trying to hold it carefully. Same thing, just gently pry, very gently pry. Don't give it much force at all. And then Gently, gently, fragile, fragile. <laughs> Remember that movie, A Christmas Story? It's fragile. Fragile. The, what a great lamp. Okay. And. Get my separate, separator in there. Ever so gently. Okay. There. Very gently. And then it just comes right off. And that way the plastic tabs are intact. So it'll make a nice tight fit when we put it back together. I'm going to put this over here hopefully away from the cats. They're super good at breaking things. And let's take a look at our, our main board now. So there's not that many serviceable components on a laptop mainboard. A lot of things like the GPU are just soldered right in there and the CPU. And, but some of the things that you can upgrade or replace if they're damaged are like 
the hard drive or SSD drive in this case, the battery if it dies, um, the memory, the memory chips. So these are items that we have power over. These are items that we could either upgrade or replace if they're damaged. If the mainboard goes bad, there's, there's nothing you can do but just order a whole new mainboard. Same thing with the GPU, the CPU. It's you know some of these things are just kind of soldered in there. But I want to test before we write this thing off. Let's test and see. Is it you know is the battery giving us issues? Is it ba a bad sodium chip? A bad sodium memory chip could keep you from booting and being able to go into the power on self test the post and the BIOS. A bad NVMe or SSD, you know, solid state drive could stop you from being able to complete the post and, and go into the BIOS. Any one of these components. So even if you don't have any fancy, uh, fancy tools or a multimeter or anything like that, just with the tools that you have, you know, a, a bit set, a simple screwdriver and trial and error, you can find out which of these components might be causing this, the system not to boot. If it's not any of the things that we have control over that we can change, then we, we would have to write it off. It's just the whole mainboard would, would need to be replaced or repaired. But but it might be one of these easily replaced components before we write it off. So how will we test that? Well, before we remove anything or test anything, we want to you know remove or disconnect the battery. And on this model, that's not so difficult. We just want to, oh, and by the way, remember that reset switch I was telling you about on the MSI models? That's sticking this paper clip in that hole, presses down on the switch here, and that resets the bias. But in this case, we don't want any current flowing through the main board if we're going to be poking around, touching components and whatnot. And we don't want any static either, so make sure you ground yourself out on something metal. Would be great if you had anti-static gloves or an anti-static mat, but as long as you don't have carpet and you ground yourself, you, you should be fine. We want to disconnect our power source first. And this just slides out towards me. And I don't want to use a lot of force with it. I want to be gentle a bit. Okay, and I'm gently pushing it towards me. And then just kind of rocking it very careful, very, you know, use kid gloves, be very gentle. Don't want to bend those pens. Okay, there. Now I've got, I've got the battery disconnected. Let me push this a little bit more. There. All right, so that removes power from the board. And, and the components we'll want to test would be, you know, first we might check the dumb chips. And these are easy, you just pull these pins out. It pops up at an angle, about a 33 degree angle. And they just pop right out. So I take this one out and I would, uh, I, you know, disconnect the battery or re reconnect the battery and try to boot it and see if it can boot with only one module. Because these are two 32 gigabyte sodium sticks and uh, I test this one first. It didn't boot. Okay, it's not that. Let's put this one back in. I slide it in at an angle and I press down until these clips make a little click noise. And then I try this one. Same thing, it pops up at a 30 degree, 33 degree angle. Um, when battery is disconnected, try that. And then gently slide it down until you hear the click, until those clips uh, click in or click in place. I've already tested it and it wasn't the memory modules. It was this, this was the culprit right here, All right? So just by trial and error, I went through that and then I tried this one. And I thought, well, if I remove the SSD, I wonder if, if I'll be able to boot it and it'll finally go into the BIOS. There won't be any software and no operating system on it in a smaller bit there. But it, I should at least be able to get into the BIOS. If I can't do that, then you know the whole system is, is dead. It's worthless. So if I, when I remove this component, 
the NVMe SSD, that's when I actually made some progress. And this works in a similar fashion to the SIDM chips. Just gently lift it up and it will be at an angle. And about a 33 degree angle. Gently, don't use too much force. Keeping yourself grounded. Bless you. One of my cats just sneezed. That was uh, Jack. He sneezed. So I pulled the SSD out, right? Now, let's see what happens when we boot it. Very, very gently, very careful. Let's reconnect the battery and see if we can get into the BIOS. Okay. So, I gently push this back towards me. Again, I want to be super careful not to bend the pens. Handle it with kid gloves and be very gen gentle. And brute force is never the answer with components this small. Gently, ever so gently, using the least amount of force. I want to slide this back in. My battery is connected now. Not on every main board, but on this main board model. After you reconnect the battery, it still won't boot. You have to connect the power source and then it adds a little bit of power and you know and the capacitors and then it'll boot. So I still have to connect this. Careful not to touch anything where I would cause it to short. You know, I'm not touching any metal or any soldered items on my main board there. So I see the light come on, I've reset it. Now this is true for these MSI main boards, but not true for every main board. If I didn't do that, it wouldn't boot. And I might think, oh, well, it wasn't that. But no, maybe I just forgot to reset it and make it bootable again. And now that it has no SSD drive, we can't load an operating system and won't have any software, but can we get into the BIOS? Will it actually get that far? Will we see a logo? Will we see anything in the power on self-test? There, a logo. And that was further than we were getting before. Okay. So checking media presence. That's so it looks like it looks like our SSD was keeping our main board from going through the power and self-test from booting. So bad SSD there. Can we get into the bias and see what's happening there? And every model is different. I think on this model it's either hold down escape or delete. So what happens if we hold down escape? There we go. So now we can get into the bias. This is progress. Now there's no SSD connected. So if we go to storage information, look, it's all empty. But this has two PCIe SSD slots. One for the operating system. You can also add a, a second one. A lot of motherboards have two. So we know the culprit. We've narrowed it down. You know, I, I tried this with removing and then replacing each memory chip. It didn't help. It wouldn't boot. But when I removed the SSD, I was able to boot, access the power on self-test, and then get into the BIOS. So I have another SSD here. It's not a great one. It's a no-name brand. But I know that it's good. I know at least that it works. And this was 2 terabytes, and this is only 512 gigabytes. But an SSD that works, even if it's small and no-name, is still better than an SSD that doesn't work, even if it's an A-Data Swordfish. Whether or not that's a great SSD, I couldn't tell you, but at this point, I'm not very impressed with this model. So we want to replace it, but we just have to be careful. Remember, if we're going to be poking and prodding around the mainboard, we always want to disconnect the power source, the battery. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this off. I'm going to close it. I am going to very gently with kid gloves, making sure that it doesn't fall, the, the display come open, flip it, see how the fan is still running, the cooling fan, remember that reset switch, I'm going to hit that, there, okay, so now it's in the reset state, and I want to remove the battery again, let's remove the battery,
gently in a rocking fashion I'm removing the battery okay so so make sure it's not connecting any pins there there okay I'm gonna take my SSD drive and again at about a 33 degree angle oops about a 33 degree angle There, now it's in there, and I want to, let me grab another bit here, because I'm going to have to screw that in with the Phillips. I change my bits, and then press this down, and I want to, not easy when you have big fat fingers like I do, I wish I had skinny thin fingers, it sure would be nice. Much better for doing work, detail work on small little things like this. If by, by some miracle I ever get this in to here. Oh, having bad eyesight's not good either. First I wore glasses most of my life, then a few years ago I had to go to bifocals. Now even the bifocals aren't enough. I need trifocals or binoculars or maybe just some bionic eyes. Some new eyes. All right, that's in nice and tight. Don't want to strip it, but get it in there nice and tight. Let's connect our battery, and we'll go check things out on the bias and see. You know, the first thing we always check is the bias. Start at the lowest layer in your diagnostic models. So you know, the power on self-test, the bias. If, if components don't show up there. There's no point in messing around with an operating system or, or you know, higher levels of, of software. So, gently push this towards me and... And I'm going to gently, ever so gently, careful not to damage or scratch any solder components or chips and don't bend any pens or plastic or there. Now I gently put the so now the battery's back. I'm gonna gently flip this over and again you want this on a flat surface. You don't want anything that is uneven or some type of fabric or anything because you don't want these fans to get caught. You don't want to cut make contact with anything electrical or shred it out. So just be sure you're on a flat, non-conductive surface. And then gently supporting the screen and mainboard, I'm going to flip it. And remember on this model, to get it to boot, we first have to apply a little bit of AC power to the mainboard, otherwise it won't boot up. So that's not true with every model, but it's true with this one. So I'm going to plug in the adapter for a few seconds. light comes on, see the light? Okay, so we'll reset here. I'm gonna remove it. It's because it's safer to do this on the battery for right now. I know the battery has a good charge to it, so I don't need the AC. Just need the AC connected to reset it. We don't need the AC to stay connected to be able to run it. We can do that from the battery safely. Okay, so I'll try to angle this so that you can see the screen. Now let's go into the bias. And I'll hold down escape. I believe it's escape on this model. Escape, delete, F2, F11. Just Google whatever model laptop you have. Google it. It'll you can find how to get into the bias. All right, there's the logo. That's a good sign. Maybe it was delete. Hmm. Can't remember. No, 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 don't boot onto Windows. Oh no, not yet, not yet. That's a good sign though, it's actually booting. All right, that's a good sign. I, I, I don't want this to boot. This old SSD that I replaced it, it's good, but it had an old installation of a, 
windows on it, so we're going to want to format it and install it because all the hardware is different. It's from a totally different model. But at least we know that was the problem. We know that the problem now was a bad SSD because when we replaced it with a known good one, it boots up just fine. But I'm trying to get it to go into the BIOS here first. Without actually Googling. There we go. That was delete. Okay. So what I want to show you, if I go to storage information, see, now that 512 gig drive shows up. There it is. That's the Intel, uh, you know, 512 gigabyte SSD drive, NVMe SSD drive that we just installed. So that's a known good drive. So this computer can be salvaged. The main board is, you know, is okay. The memory was okay. It was actually, the SSD in this case was one of the least expensive components. So you could buy one of these for, depending on where you buy it from, between $100 and $120. Which, you know, a main board could cost you five, $600 easy or more, depending on the model of laptop if you had to replace the whole main board. Memory chips are more. Memory chips could cost you, you know, $150, $200 maybe. Depends on the type of memory and, and how much, right? So this is good news. This is very good news. We're able to salvage this with this other SSD. It's smaller, but it works. You know? A 512 gigabyte SSD that works is still better than a two terabyte SSD that sucks, <laughs> that doesn't work at all, and that it makes your system unbootable. So, goodbye a data. Nice knowing you. All right, so let's turn this off. And we just need to get everything back together. So very carefully, I'm gonna put our cover back on. These things are so flimsy and fragile. It's very thin, weak plastic. And if you applied too much pressure in the wrong place, it's just gonna crack and break on you. So be careful how you do that. And uh, this particular, not every laptop, but this particular model, there's little clips here, you know, grooves where it needs to, you need to do it, start it from this side, right here where the USB-C ports and these parts are, start from this side and then move it back. Also, I'm going to hit the reset switch so nothing comes on while we're putting the cover on with my little paper clip here. There. I'll interrupt the power. We don't want the fans coming on or any current going through the board when we're doing this. So at an angle, if you can see, I'm going to have to pull this towards me and unfortunately I don't have enough room for the camera, but I'm angling this like this. I'm going to kind of wiggle it down gently, but without applying too much force. And then I will try to slide it and get these clips to go in. And then we can put the screws back in. Okay.
Jack is on Pride Rock. Sebastian has been deposed and dethroned. Poor Sebastian. Nothing, no one will, no one will get Jack off of Pride Rock. He's the Lion King now, right Jack? <laughs> so now that we have the SSD installed and the machine's bootable again, we don't want to use the files on that old NVMe SSD because it's from a completely different computer, different uh, hardware, different device drivers. It would just cause a kernel panic. And it would be solder, or blue screen. Um, so I have a tool I use for, called Pendrive Linux. I use it for making backups with Clonezilla, and uh, you can make add multiple operating systems to a, st a single USB stick, and you can use it to then install or repair those operating systems. And on this particular stick, um, I made it UEFI compatible, and I installed Ubuntu, Windows 10, Windows 11, and 2022 server, as well as Clonezilla and a bunch of other tools. So we want to go in the BIOS and see what's going on. I'm going to go ahead and insert the stick. Okay. And we're going to go into the BIOS and see what... I want to make sure this is UEFI. There's different versions of Pendrive, and if you download Legacy, you'd want to switch your BIOS to Legacy. But it's important when we reinstall Windows that we want it to be in the original mode. Okay, uh, so under the boot here, it's it's set to UEFI, not legacy here. So we just want to make sure that we use the right version of Pendrive that's UEFI compatible. And I'm just going to exit, uh, quit without saving here, so I don't want to change anything. I'm going to hit F11 to bring up the one-time boot menu. Oh, I wasn't quick enough. I started over. It's trying to load. We don't want to load Windows because again, it's not right for this. Uh, I'm going to do a clean install here. Let's read and I'm going to start pressing F11 to get to the one time boot menu. It's different on every model. You'll want to Google it for your model of laptop. Find out what key combination gets you in the BIOS. And in this case, F11 for this model, the gf 65 SD. This is an MSI laptop. It gets me here. This is my Geek Squad, my 32 gigabyte slash drive. That's the one I want to boot off of. I'm going to hit enter. You, a lot of times with UEFI systems, you'll get this verification failed, security evaluation. I'm going to click OK. See how it's counting down? I, I hope the camera can focus on that. I'm going to hit the down arrow. Uh, and I want to select a roll key from disk. And the where I want to roll it is the VTOY EFI. Right? VTOY EFI. And set the key will be rolled into the mock database. Yada yada yada. Let's do a Vintoy. Um, mock manager cert tool here. And then I'm going to select uh, continue. I'm going to say yes. And then I'm going to click a reboot. And again, I'm going to start hitting F11. For UEFI and UEFI secure boot. And now I'm going to select the same device again. This is my, my Geek Squad 32 gigabyte flash drive with my pen drive Linux and all my ISOs and whatnot on it. And now see, I get this menu. This is the yummy pen drive Linux menu. And this is such a cool tool. Look at this. I have, there's Linux Ubuntu, and I have Clonezilla, Ghost for Linux, Gparted available. I have Windows 10, Windows 11. Um, I do unlisted ISOs. There's some older versions of Ghost and D-Band and Part of Magic, and there's 2022 Server, Standard Edition. So on one USB drive, I can do all these things, load all these things, once I've enrolled the keys uh, in UEFI, but in this case, I want Windows 11. So let's do Windows 11, Windows Pro. 
I'm gonna load this guy, so we're gonna boot it in normal mode. 